Hey, John Hardison here from Studio 113 at East Hall High School in Gainesville, Georgia. This is video number two for Pear Deck, and in this video we're going to run through a practice interactive lesson very quickly. I wanted to let you know that what you see right here is my teacher account for an interactive lesson uh, or presentation, I should say, called Realism and the Story of an Hour number two. This uh, is in conjunction with American literature and the realism genre and Kate Chopin's The Story of an Hour. I will be showing you, as a student, I will be showing you my smartphone and this is an iPhone 6 Plus. So I'm just going to test it as a student from that. But before I begin, let me get started presenting. So I click here as a teacher, starting the session. You can see it gives me three different ways to view this. This one here, as you're looking, shows premium. Right now I do have the 30-day trial for the premium account, but I'm going to go here to the projector view, which is very similar to the student view, and it will give the students the connection code. So I click here, and then it shows what the students should be selecting. And I'm going to do that as a student. So again, if you see my smartphone, I am treating it just like a student. I'm actually using my son to help me with this. And so I should be logging in. And you can see it says, you're in. Your teacher will begin shortly. So I'm going to go back to the actual teacher presentation teacher presentation mode and this let's get acclimated here this one if I click it will show me all of my slides in case I need to jump to a particular one that's pretty cool if you want to customize some things I'm going to go back and start with my first slide this is going to push the slides through and I will show you the rest of these as I'm actually working this so let's go we are on the first slide and what I would do is I would, of course, read this slide. I would go through and talk about uh, the notes like I would normally do. I'll be honest with you, I'm not much of a lecturer. I believe in keeping students active. And if there is any inf information to be disseminated, I believe that needs to be done quickly and to get the kids engaged and being hands-on active. But here, I would talk for just a bit and then I would give a prompt. So here's the smartphone. And this one I have, as a teacher, asked them to say something about certain things that they think need to be discussed more uh, if we were looking at things realistically. So let's just say that we're looking at, um, maybe the students want to say poverty. And I have allowed them to give a text response, a free response, if you will, but it is short free response. Later on, you'll see where I do an actual paragraph form. So I click done here and I click post. Boom, poverty. Okay, and you could even put a new answer in, but I wanna go back here and show you that now it shows here at the bottom that I have one response. I can go to this one and show student responses. So I click, it loads the student response. Obviously, if I had 20 or 30 students who had just posted something, I could scroll back and forth and I could let that kind of lead my discussion. I'm going to turn off the student responses, and then now I'll push to slide number two. And then as soon as I did that, it gave me a larger area to which I can respond as a student. Now for this one, I would probably be talking about um, what are some controversial issues that you think uh, realism would actually express today and the students would respond. Now for this one, I gave them a much longer answer. I am just going to give an example. Just imagine if I were to write three or four sentences here, and especially in a language arts classroom, I would ask them to edit very quickly before they posted, and then click done and post. I go back as a teacher, again, I can click here and I can look at all of the students' responses and please imagine that this were a good long paragraph and you're like, wow, let's uh, direct our attention over here to the person that wrote that and it really leads your discussion. 
Now if I want, I can actually lock student responses. So I can lock that. As soon as I did that, it shows your teacher has locked responses for this question. Very, very cool. If I wanted to, I also could ask the question again. And we'll look at these other ones here in just a moment. But I want to go to the next slide. So the next slide, this is what the students would see on my projector screen. And it's an appropriate picture that goes with it. It says, why is Richard so concerned about bearing the sad message to Mrs. Mallard himself? The student sees this. And I'm just going to pick the first one. There it is. And now I go here, it shows that I have one response. I have three classes of American literature and each one of them has at least 28 students. So I would be looking for 28 responses or more. And I'm going to go here, look at the student responses. This is what I really love. This would be so helpful just to see uh, what your students are saying if they're already getting this. And again, I'm going to be using this uh, in just a few days, so I will know within a few paragraphs, hey, who does not get you know, the reason why Mr. Richards or Richards is so uh, concerned about telling Mrs. Mallard about her husband's death? I can really gauge, and then maybe I just slow down a bit, maybe, uh, maybe I speed up if uh, they all have it. Okay, and I wanna show you just as I click here, how it changes on the student's device. Go to my next slide. I thought it would stay up there, but there it is. Now this one's a really cool one. All the students will see is this grid. Now I actually did that just so it would be a window because if you know the story of an hour by Kate Chopin, you know that she sits after she hears about her husband's death and she looks out the window and starts to take in all that she sees, which is very symbolic of how she is changing in real time. So I gotta tell, I gotta tell you, and I've told all my audience members before, I do not draw well for the sake of just showing you and hopefully having you imagine what can be done here. Uh, I can change my color and then I can also change the width of whatever I draw. So for example, I'll make that a little bit different. And you can see that. No big deal, I understand that. But I can draw whatever I want. For this particular prompt, I would actually be asking the students to draw four things that Mrs. Mallard sees when looking out that window and to put each one in a different quadrant. I would have to give them a pretty good bit of time to do this, but believe me, these students just do amazing things on tablets and smartphones, and of course, a laptop if they have the laptop in class. Please remember that, or please take a look and see that I could take an eraser, and I could go through and erase. Please look and see that I could draw some straight lines if needed, and I'll just change the color to give a little bit of, a little bit of a different look, whatever I need to do. And I can make that a smaller line. And then you can also text. So example. There we go. And I'm looking for that example. There it is. And that's kind of tough to show. Maybe I'll make it red here. And then do it. There it is. So although this is a very bad artistic example, uh, I do not draw well, like I said. So I just wanted to show you that you can draw lines and you can put in text. You can change color. You can change the width of what you draw. And of course, you can erase. So a very, very cool way to make this lesson interactive. And when I go back to my dashboard, I can go see what has been drawn. Now, how cool would that be? if you have all the students and you can just go through and see what they have done. Now, if I do use this one this week with this uh, interactive lesson, I'll probably use an iPad or I'll probably have them have access to a laptop. But since I had a, an iPhone 6 Plus, believe me, that's uh, pretty close to a little tablet. So now I'm going to go to the next one. And the next one is just another free response. And I know it may not seem glamorous, but it is a language arts classroom. So I'll post that. 
and then you know what I can do. I'm going to lock the response here. I'm going to move on, and let's see what our next one is. Now this one is much different. I like this. Very, very quick and easy, very cool way of assessing um, how the students understood this. So this is what it looks like. The students will see this grid, and as they see this grid, I'm going to ask them to draw or to drag a red dot as far into that corner of that quadrant to show how well they understand this and in fact how confident they are. So if a student dra uh, drags it all the way to the far corner of that quadrant, we know that he is positive about the answer. Here's what the students do. So the actual uh, answer here is Louise is dead and Brentley is alive going to drag it all the way to the very corner. I am positive about that. There we go. As a teacher, I go back. I'm going to look at my response. And my response, once this goes away, there you go. You see the red dot in the very lower quadrant. And I know that the students are doing pretty well. Imagine here if you had 29 or 30 other dots just all sporadically placed around. You would get a quick gauge of where your students, what your students felt about this short story. And you also could know who posted that. But since I'm just doing one student, uh, we only have one red dot. So I'll go back here. And before I do this one, which is nothing glamorous, I wanted to show you this. Uh, actually right here, ask a quick question. So let's say I wanna ask a quick question. Something pops up and maybe I'm just kind of going with the flow and I think, oh, that would be so cool. I click here. And then I want to ask about anything. So I can choose about this or I can choose about anything. I click here, look at my options. You got the thumb up, thumb down, agree or disagree, draw on a grid, draw on blank, yes or no, true, false, ABCD, numeric, short text or long text answers. Very cool. I'm going to throw this in here very quickly. And it says drag your dot between thumbs up and thumbs down. So the student sees this. And let's just say maybe I'm like, well, um, how many of you agree? I ask a question verbally to the class. I ask them to drag it as far up and in the corner of where they feel um, where they feel best about their answer. So thumbs up or thumbs down. And again, I'm just using one student as an example. Let's say 29 or 30 other ones were dragging their dots to the appropriate area. That gives you quick really cool feedback love that all right we go back now and let me see if i can go to the one that i skipped here this one was just going to be another response and all i'm going to do is throw something in there very quickly just to move on you know what would be done here but the last one i wanted to show you is this if you saw the first video tutorial, you show how you saw how I quickly added in a YouTube video. So at this time on the projector screen, I would play this video, which is a parody of Kate Chopin's The Story of an Hour. And then at the very end of that, I would ask the students to tell me how that responds or how that relates rather to Kate Chopin's The Story of an Hour. Maybe even comment about how well the students did in creating this parody. So there you have it. I would have an answer placed in there, and I would post. There you go. And then now I will go to end this session. And I'm going to save it. Excuse me just a second. And I'm going to save this as a test. Realism. Just to go ahead and save it, save and close, and there we go. Only one other thing I wanted to show you here is please don't forget you have this menu to the left, and from this menu to the left, you can go and do many, many things. You can see you can rename the file, make a copy, print, import slides, you can share, you can even go look at your last session. So I'm going to go look here and click on the last session which I named test realism and I could go through and you can see my son was helping and I could go through and look at what my son did for each 
one of these. This is what he said about that one. This is what he wrote here. This is where he dragged his red dot to. You get the picture. This is very cool stuff. Great feedback. And just imagine all other 30 students down throughout here. So, in all honesty, this is my first time checking out Pear Deck. I have used Socrative, I've used Kahoot, I really liked uh, Infuse Learning before it closed its doors, but this is another tool among the many, many, many ed tech tools out there that if used as a tool and not a toy, could serve your students very well and make reading interactive. But please don't forget, you don't have to have a gadget in front of the student to make it interactive. You can do so many other things a la acting. All right, see ya. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks.